Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady, where silly Karen seemed to think that anyone who looks like an employee must be an employee. And in this episode, we've got a Karen throwing a tantrum in a hospital, and oh boy, you'll be shaking your heads and laughing. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. So I'm a flight attendant from a major airline. Several years ago, I lived in Miami Beach in an oceanfront apartment building. Several floors of the building operated as a hotel, but it was mostly residences. The parking garage was underneath the building. You get the picture. I had just worked a long international trip and I was exhausted. So I get home, parked my car, and got in the elevator. It stopped on the lobby level, and a couple who had just checked into the hotel entered. That's when the random man saw my uniform and he starts loudly griping about their flight to Miami. Saying something like, we were stuck in Houston for five damn hours and they didn't give us a hotel room or some crap. Now, I take a lot of abuse from people who need to vent, especially in my job position. And mostly, it rolls off my back, but that's when I'm on the clock at work. I couldn't believe that I was getting yelled at in my own home about some stupid airline thing that I had nothing to do with. I was tired and over it, and after a 10-hour flight, I just let him have it and said, You had a stopover in Houston, so I'm guessing you must have flown on United, right? He then said yes, and pretended to keep yelling that he was going to complain to corporate. I just stop him right there and say, well, I don't work for United. And even if I did, I still wouldn't give a damn. This is where I live. How dare you get in my face, in my own home, to gripe about your minor inconvenience? Go back to the airport and complain. What am I going to do about this? Now, I don't remember everything I said, but by the time we reached my floor, he was backed up against the wall. I do remember shouting, bye bye as I stomped out of the elevator. I used to be a people person, but people ruined it. Now I think Opie handled that well, and honestly, I don't know anyone who would have taken that kind of abuse outside of work. Like really, what did that guy expect out of that conversation? For Opie to apologize profusely and then offer him a voucher or something? And seriously, I'm just glad she let him have it and shut him up. Maybe next time he'll think twice about complaining to an employee outside of their work. So I work at a candy shop, and there's an adult toy shop in the neighborhood with a similar name to our store. So when I tell people where I work, I always have to add the one that sells actual candy. So this is a phone call I got today. A woman calls and says, Hi, my name is so-and-so, and I have a complaint about one of your products. Who can I speak to? I say to her, I can help you. What's the problem? The woman says, well, I bought a toy from you, and I don't quite know how to explain it, but when I was using it, I... I then stop her and say, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you've called the wrong store. The woman goes on and says, well, you didn't let me finish. It fell apart while I was using it. What's the return policy on this? Or could you explain to me how to put it back together so it doesn't do that? Again, I say, I'm sorry, but you've called the candy store. I think you meant to call the adult shop. The woman replies, well, you should still be able to help me if you sell the same products. I say to her, I'm sorry, we have the same name, but we're a totally separate company with totally separate products. We sell candy, as in the food. We don't carry any adult products. The woman's still not listening to me, and at this point, I'm trying to keep from bursting out laughing. The woman is clearly not listening, and she goes on and says, Well, I bought this yesterday, and this is the first time it's been put into use. I'm just wondering if you could help me. I, I just stop her right then and there and say, Okay, that doesn't change the fact that you're talking to a person who works at a store that sells candy. You need to hang up the phone and call the adult shop. She then says, Ugh, if you won't help me, will the one in this neighborhood help me? I just replied, Sure, good luck. And the woman hangs up. Now that would have been a super awkward and funny phone call to get, guys. And I think we can all see why her product didn't work properly. Like, if she can't listen to someone telling her that she's called the wrong number, chances are she probably didn't even look at the instructions, right? And this person comments their similar situation and says, This reminds me years back when I was working at a hardware store. This person on the phone dialed the wrong phone number and was asking about butt plugs. 
Being that I worked in electrical at the time, my mind immediately made the leap to electrical butt connectors. So I put them on hold, looked up some information, and when I returned to the call, I informed the person of the pricing for packs of 10, 50, and 100 in a couple of different brands, and that also for larger orders over a thousand, we can place special orders for no additional cost and have it in on Tuesday afternoon. The person on the phone sounded a little confused, and then asked for the pricing for one single. I just said, we don't sell singles here. After a bit more talking, I finally caught on to what exactly they wanted. I had to then inform the person that we were a hardware store. And this is why you always have to make sure that you're dialing the right number. And seriously, thank goodness for Google nowadays, right? Just search the name, hit call number, and off you go. I'm sure that saved many people over the years. Alright, so here's two things to know about medical school in the US. One is it's insanely expensive, like $250,000 per degree. And two, we do a bunch of mandatory rotations through certain specialties where we're usually treated like garbage. That also includes OBGYN. When I trained, OBGYN was infamously known as the specialty that eats its young. For a specialty that brings life into the world, they definitely did their best to suck mine out of me. And who knows, maybe it changed in recent years. Anyways, that's the setting. So here I am, in the labor unit working night shifts from 7pm to 7am. The residents who are training doctors and attendings who are practicing doctors in charge of the team have all made it clear to me that in the hierarchy of importance, I'm beneath the trash can. So I'm stuck there for 12 hours avoiding them when they're stressed and trying to help to a degree that I don't piss anyone off. That's when a lady comes rolling in with two other people and one of the residents tells me to go see her. Little did I know, she was a Karen. So I walk up to her room and say, Hi, I'm OP, the medical student with the labor and delivery unit. Is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Right then, Karen says, Wait, just give me a moment. I need to check your aura. Now here's a side note. I do pride myself on having an amazing poker face, in part because of the bat crap crazy things I've experienced in medical school, and this was one of them. I just say to her, What? Karen goes on and says, Your aura. Looking at you, I detect oranges and yellows. You're an optimist, aren't you? I need that right now, so I'll allow it. Come in, come in. I just thank her. I was young and innocent, and I didn't leave immediately, but my woo-woo senses were screaming. I go through my typical questions about her pregnancy and labor so far, and then I ask the dangerous question, do you have a birth plan? Well, little did I know, I was in for a surprise, because the woman pulls out a laminated binder, opens it, and then proceeds to walk me through her incredibly long list of requests, including... No lights, no medications for herself or the baby, no epidurals, regular meditation, keep the placenta, oil diffuser must be in the room, etc. I think at some point, the nurses felt pity on me, and one came in to check. Karen checked her aura as well. She was a purple, which I don't know what that meant, but that means she was in. The nurse then gets pulled into her long explanation of her pink laminated birth bible. The nurse tells Karen, Ma'am, thank you for showing this to us, but I think you should discuss this with the doctors because some of your wishes we can do, but some we might not be able to meet, depending on how your labor goes. That's when Karen says, Well, I paid good money to be here. I pay for all of you to be here. You can make it happen. Eventually, I talk her into letting me have the binder to show it to the doctor, and we step out of the room. The nurse leaves very ominously saying, she's going to be special. So for the next few hours, her room turns into a revolving door, as Karen proceeds to hire and fire people based on their auras. Now how this lady read them, I have no clue, but she ends up firing four nurses, two residents, a tech, and the janitor because some of them were radiating bad energy and one person was too red. She absolutely refused to have any discussion about her birth plan or give any leeway with it because it was decided with her spiritual guru. No one wanted to talk to her because she was too woo-woo. So clearly since I'm one of the very few she accepted, I'm stuck going into her sage-scented room to appease her whims, including cleaning her stuff, refilling her oil diffuser, rubbing tea tree oil on weird places, and helping her in yoga positions. 
And then the labor pain really kicked in. And suddenly, morphine was okay in her birth plan because, quote, it was a natural remedy. And the anesthesiologist's piercing green aura was now tolerable because he, quote, mellowed into a soft matcha. Now this was all great, except when you give too much morphine to a pregnant woman, the baby also gets it too. And the baby's heart rate was now slowing, so I'm stuck telling her that she can't get more morphine. So I go into the room, and Karen says, Oh, thank goodness you're here. I need more morphine. I'm in so much pain. I say to her, Ma'am, I understand you're in pain. However, we can't give you any more. Your baby can't tolerate it. At that, Karen says, The baby? The baby's completely fine. I feel him. It's me you should be worried about. I'm the one paying to be here, and I'm in pain. I need the morphine. The woman absolutely loses it, and she starts screaming. And I say, ma'am, the anesthesiologist can discuss giving you an epidural for pain control. It'll be safer for both you and the baby, and it'll control your pain. That's when Karen says, an epidural? You want me to put toxin in my body? Didn't you read my birth plan? Absolutely not. I need the morphine. Again, I paid to be here and I pay for your salary. So I hired you. Remember, I can fire you. You should be listening to me here. Me, in my 11th hour of being there, broke. And I say, ma'am, with all due respect, I'm just the medical student. I don't even get a salary. I actually pay to be here. And even if you fire me, your doctors, including your anesthesia team, is saying you can't get any more morphine because it's a danger to your baby. Do you hear me? I'm sure the anesthesiologists are happy to discuss other options for your pain control, which includes an option for an epidural. And the Karen absolutely throws a tantrum and screams, F those toxins. F you. Get out. You're fired too. I knew in my heart you weren't a yellow, but I gave you a chance. You were a chartreuse. So yeah, I got home and collapsed happily in my bed. The next day, I checked in and I got the full story from the nurses. Apparently, she cracked from the pain and she got an epidural. She then went into active labor and she hated it so much that she demanded her body to stop. She then underwent general anesthesia for a C-section and she delivered her baby. For the rest of the month I was there, all of us had a little name tag with our aura colors on it. I was chartreuse. Guys, I love this story so freaking much. Like the aura colors, oh my goodness. And being a person that's not a medical professional, I totally forgot that they probably have to deal with people like her on a regular basis. And seriously, this is where medical professionals are professional because if that were me in the room with her guys, holy cow, you could not pay me money to keep a straight face. Especially with the chartreuse thing, I would have died laughing. So yesterday evening, as I was leaving the dog park, and since my younger pup was in need of chewing toys, I decided to stop by a local pet store that permits pets. When I came in, there were only like two people, no dogs and no employees nearby. So I took my time looking around. Now, the employees here have a casual dress code with jeans, shirt, and apron. I was wearing the same, minus the apron. Also, to paint the picture, my senior dog is medium-sized and thin, but very protective of me, and my pup's a bit bigger and stronger. I was looking at the treats when a woman about my age approaches me, and she asked about the birds. When she realized I wasn't an employee, she apologized, but I told her I could help her. I'm a biologist, and my mom works with birds, so I answered some basic questions about food and housing, and showed her a couple of websites on my phone where she could find some more information. She then thanked me and went on her way. As I was going back to the dog toys, an older woman, a Karen, carrying a small dog comes up to me, and she starts asking to have her dog groomed. The woman walks up to me and says, Hey, I need to leave my dog for basic grooming. How much will it be, and when can I pick her up? I say to her, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. You can ask an employee if you want, but I think they're closed for the day. Karen then looks at me and says, You think? I replied, Yes. An employee would be able to answer your question. Karen then says in a condescending tone, That's what I'm doing, hun. Now can you do your job and help a customer? At this point, her dog starts growling at mine. My pup was getting a bit excited and wagging his tail, but my senior dog was staring at it, which usually means he's annoyed and running on low patience. I say to her, I really don't know. I'm not an employee. Karen then says, Then why were you helping that woman? 
I respond, because I happen to know a bit about what she was asking for. And Karen says, Oh, and you don't want to help me? How hard would it be to go find out for me? At this point, she was raising her voice at me, and her dog was full on barking. I was struggling to keep my pup still, and my senior dog had started baring his teeth. So I tried to walk away, but Karen kept getting closer. I say to her, I told you I'm not an employee, so look, I can't help with what you need. You're upsetting my dogs, so please stay back. Karen says, oh for F's sake, just take my dog and stop wasting my time. She then shoves her dog towards me. I rose my hands in front of me in reflex and the little thing bites my finger hard. And I yelped loudly. Thankfully, it didn't break skin. But it did cause my senior dog to jump at the woman and start barking at her dog, making her lose her balance and fall down. And that's when Karen screams bloody hell, Help! You need to control those beasts! I'm gonna report you! You're losing this job! Blah blah blah. At this point, a supervisor comes from behind me, along with another employee and says, Hey, what's happening here? Karen says, Your employee threw those dogs at me when I tried to ask about grooming. She shouldn't be allowed around pets. That's when I say, I told you to leave us alone, I'm not an employee. The supervisor's helping the woman up, while the other employee's trying to pick up the tiny dog. Supervisor tells Karen, she's right, she doesn't work for us and the groomer's gone for the day. Karen then says, unbelievable, who's a supervisor here, call them. The supervisor tells her, there's no need, I'm the supervisor and I saw the last part. You were harassing a customer so please, leave the store and get off the premises. Karen just screams unbelievable as she snatched her dog from the employee's hands and she storms off. But she kept turning around to scream insults at us. In the end, I was way too shaken up and I decided not to buy anything. They explained that they were fixing an issue on the other side of the store, but came running when they heard Karen raising her voice. By the time I left and got to my car, the Karen was gone and I could leave in peace. Guys, so reading the comments, a lot of people are saying that Karen should not have been let go that day and she needed to face consequences because she caused OP to get bit. With that said guys, reading a lot of these stories, I will never understand why people think it's appropriate to shove a child or an animal at some stranger without even verifying that they actually work there. Like what would they do if the employee just takes them and never comes back? So last week, I went to a buffet restaurant and I heard someone talking in line behind me. But I ignored him because I'm by myself, so I wasn't even thinking he could be talking to me. After about a minute, he grabs my shoulder roughly and turns me to him. And the guy starts yelling in my face, Hey, do you work here? Now I was having a nice quiet day to myself and I wasn't matching that energy. But I rose to the challenge pretty quickly and I replied, Do I look like I work here? Ending with a tone that could only mean idiot. Everyone in line was just staring at us at this point, so I turned to the guy in front of me and very loudly said, Do you believe this guy? Ending with the same tone that could only mean idiot. The guy in front starts giggling like a schoolgirl, so now I feel like he's my audience and I need to perform. The guy who just yelled at me goes, Oh, well I work here and I thought you did too because this needs to be replenished. The guy then stares at me like he was waiting for me to do something, as though I was lying about having not worked there. I just stared at the guy for the longest time with an oh my god, you are really stupid look, and slowly turned to the giggler to show him my face, and this poor guy looked like he was gonna pee himself. Honestly, the guy even had the face of a dickhead, like how did this guy tie his shoes? I'm just thinking, one, if you work in the service industry, why are you an ass to a fellow service worker? Two, I'm in line in front of you, getting food, just like you. Three, if you work somewhere, how do you not know your coworkers? And lastly, why would I give an F even if I did work there? If I was in line getting food, obviously I wouldn't be on the clock. And another thing is, I got out of my car the same time this guy did. He parked right next to me and we walked in together. I'm wearing a mini skirt, heels, and a tube top with my hair down. How could I be mistaken for an employee? I just start saying this stuff to the guy in front of me and he's bent over the broccoli losing his mind. The guy behind me was so mad. I could feel him fuming when I was grilling him to the other patrons in front of him like he wasn't even there. I hope he learns his lesson. Keep your hands to yourself and be kinder to strangers. Especially if you want something from them. You know, that kindergarten stuff. 
Apparently, he missed it. Oh man, what a mistake that was, guys. And I just wish OP flipped the script on him and went full Karen on the guy. Like, if you work here, why don't you go fill it yourself? Don't make me get your manager and have you fired. And this person comments, he knew you didn't work there. The guy was trying to hit on you and did a very poor job of it. I'd report him for touching me because it's not a good idea to randomly grab someone's shoulder from behind like that. I really, really hate that stuff, and I would have punched him out of instinct. Keep your hands to yourself is a lesson that he hasn't learned yet and needs to. Some people really, really don't like being surprised touched by strangers. Great job embarrassing the guy. That was very funny, and I would have liked to see it. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode, where a psycho dad harasses OP at a hospital and demands her heart monitor. It's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.